What's up guys, it's Mitch with SC Weather coming at you with another product review from Ambient Weather. Um, I'm a huge supporter of Ambient Weather. I've been gradually getting more of their products and uh, I kind of wanted to give you all an idea if you're all thinking about getting this soil moisture sensor WH31SM, what you're kind of getting yourself into and, and what can you expect things like that this is my setup I've been I had mine installed already for about a month so I took it out for you guys just so y'all can get a visual on it and things like that that is the box it comes in little manual it comes in things like that mine's already connected it, it just connects as soon as you put one of these batteries in which they do recommend um, putting using one of these uh, ultimate lithium energizer batteries before we get really in deep this video I asked you all do subscribe because um, I, I love showing these products and I'm imagining if you're watching this video, you're a big weather fan or at least somewhat weather fan or uh, you wouldn't be wanting to watch stuff like this. So um, subscribe. I got cool content for here in South Carolina. I post a lot of weather stuff and I most certainly post a lot of stuff on ambient weather products. And uh, I've been, I'm going to try to get every single add on they have on this. One thing I don't have is the air quality sensor. Don't have that yet, maybe in the future I can get that. I do have the lightning detector, have a review on that. And uh, so so definitely subscribe, follow along. I love their products and uh, let's, get start, let's get going. So like I said, it comes with this cool little box here, nothing much to it, comes with this manual. Um, in this manual, and you know, I, I just kind of want to get in depth here with you. It kind of breaks down what you do. Uh, this is kind of critical because this is how you insert it into the ground and things like that. So. Battery, correct, battery battery cap, number two, um, the LED indicator, number one, and the actual sensor, what senses the soil is right there, which is right there. And um, so it gets into that. Also, check it out here. That's very important. You need to update your latest firmware, your Wi-Fi firmware, and, um, and the actual console firmware. I struggled with that because I'm tech, uh, technology kind of kind of slow sometimes, but... Um, I finally got that going so batteries it recommends these batteries because they last and they, they just they're just the best battery they're expensive they're, but they're the best batteries on the market I'll tell you that uh, double A's it just one just like that insert it uh, pre-installation there's the things it tells you the signal strength stuff like that uh, sensor replacement and I'm gonna get into this I'm not gonna read much into that because I want to show you how I did mine because that might be a little confusing it might not uh, it also gives you an option to do a two-point linear calibration. I'll be honest, I did not do that. It is an option to do it because it recommends to do it. Um, it kind of gives you an idea uh, due to different soil types and densities, and it gives you more accurate readings if you do it this way. So I recommend you do it, obviously. Um, I'll be honest, man, I didn't have the patience to mess with that too much, um, so I didn't. Uh, shows you kind of the setup ambient weather, and I don't know if you can see this in the background here. But uh, that's mine. It shows very wet right now. That's because I rinsed mine off and soaked it in water so I could bring it out here with you guys and pull it out the ground. So breaks down the fact that you can have eight different sensors and just things like that. It reads zero to 100% uh, as far as how dry it is, how wet it is. And uh, like I said, you can do up to eight different sensors kind of like the optional uh, temperature sensor that you can add to the station. Oh, this only works for WS2000 models and WS5000 models. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, does not work for the uh, WS, what is it, 2902B now. It was A. Um, so this is a cool product and uh, I just kind of, first off I want to get into it and how I put it in the ground so y'all kind of have an idea for y'all get going for y'all buy this. And uh, then I want to kind of show you some, I've had this for a month, so I kind of want to show y'all how, uh, how, how, I guess it's reaction to different weather conditions like heavy rain, like storms, like your sprinkler system, your irrigation system. How sensitive is it to that when it gets your soil wet and your yard wet or wherever you have it? So let's just dive right into this. Alright, so this is my yard, this is my setup, and uh, I have mine placed right here. So I already have a little hole because I've already I've already removed it. So you, I'm sorry. So you have to make sure you insert this whole entire part into here, just like that. Make sure that entire bottom part, which is considered the actual soil moisture sensor, is in there. You kind of fill in. I had mine about like that. Um, 
So this little light here will transmit every 71 seconds and it'll blink. It might blink while I'm doing this. You might not see it because it is hot and it is sunny. Um, but I have mine right there. I have an irrigation system. So um, mine definitely fluctuates throughout the day because uh, I like to keep my yard nice and green. But yep, that's how you put it in there. Um, I'll be honest. Um, I haven't really seen anybody else's and how they do it and how much they cover up this part. I think some people might cover up more. Some people might not. But this is kind of how I have mine covered up. So, uh, yep, that's how you do it right there. That's how I got mine. So maybe your next question is, how does it show on your console, on your display, wherever you have, wherever you may have it sitting in your house? So this is where it shows right here. It shows right here at the top, right above your fluctuating uh, inside temperature, wherever you have an extra sensor. So it's right there, right beside where if you have a lightning detector sits, shows right there. So, um, of course, outside temperature for your sensor array, right there. So that's where it sits, nice and convenient. Um, ambient Weather does a great job of kind of putting things. This is an awesome console. I love the WS2000 console. So, yeah, that's where it sits. Now, let's get into some 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 past, uh, some real-life kind of things as far as how sensitive is this sensor to storms, sprinkler systems, whatever it may be. Okay, so I have, I have my um, Ambient Weather app set up on my iPad here. Um, I kind of want to show you where it shows and it will immediately pop up. As soon as you pop that AA battery in, it's going to pop up on your app. It's going to pop up on your console pretty quickly. So um, this is kind of how it shows. I'm sorry, my bad guys. Here we go. This is kind of how it shows. Sorry, I think y'all can see still with it slanted like that. Uh, it's right there. See how it says 88%? It says 88% moisture. Conditions are very wet. Straightforward. Nothing nothing crazy about that um, you can also and I've showed this in other videos you can also set up alerts to your um, to your phone for instance um, I might just be able to show it to you right here let's see yep right there see all them alerts right there let me see if I can set this up a little bit better for you guys without making it fall again um, Got to be real sensitive. Things about to fall again. So here we go. See all these alerts I have set up, um, and you can you can do that in the app. You can set up where it shoots text messages to you and things like that. So if you look at this one right there, I don't know if you can read it. It says front yard moisture is less than fifty percent. So I have mine set up to shoot me a text message to when the moisture is less than fifty percent, so it can tell me, hey, it's starting to get kind of dry out there. Um, also have. I think other ones too that maybe it's like is it less than 25 percent or something like that but anyways you kind of you kind of get the point there so i kind of want to make add this part to the video too this is kind of like a i'm kind of showing you how good this works how sensitive it is to rain how sensitive it is to dry periods things like that uh, i'm not gonna have a really good example of how how dry it, it, it can get because uh we've had so much rain here uh, this summer we, we have not lacked rain really at all here in the Midlands of South Carolina So but one thing I do want to show you my irrigation system goes off at 7 a.m. Every morning, so You can look at this little period right here. Let's see if I can get this little cursor thing to come up I kind of I kind of have mine on rain delay for a couple of days because we were getting plenty of uh, mother nature rain but if you look right here um, You can tell that it obviously we had a big storm sometime around 4 p.m. August 2nd. It's a huge spike in the rain, and I could probably back that up with actual data, but I'm not going to get too deep in that. But it dropped, and it went back up around 8 a.m. You see that little increase? It's because my sprinklers came on, my irrigation system. Then it kind of dropped, probably didn't have much rain that day. Then it went right back up 8 a.m. again because that was right after my irrigation system went off. So let's see the increase. For instance, that day it increased by almost 20%. So... Each day, another increase 8 a.m. because it's right after my irrigation system goes off. So, um, it, it, it'll, it, it depends on how hot and dry it is at your location. If it's not getting super, super hot, it does here. Now, we got plenty of humidity. I mean, I mean, geez, look, look, look at this. The daggum dew point, let's see if we can get the, the dew point is 76.1 now, right now. Heat index of a good old 101. So, it's plenty of humid. But keep in mind that, I mean... If it's hot, it's hot. So it's gonna dry it out quick. So 
I haven't seen mine get really below 15% yet before a storm came and, and got that the moisture nice and moisturized again. So um, that's pretty much all I got, guys. Uh, I hope this helped. Uh, maybe you'll decide. Overall, this is a pretty cool product. I, I'll, I'll be honest, I haven't really looked much at it because I mainly got it to see how dry my yard gets. I keep up with my yard big time. And uh, we've had plenty of rain, so we haven't lacked moisture, soil moisture at all. It hasn't been really dry, so. But I know that it's going to be a really cool product in the future, and I'm excited about it just to watch to see how, um, how it does. But that's all I got. Maybe it'll encourage you to buy it. Maybe it didn't. But subscribe if you haven't. Uh, and y'all have an awesome day, and I uh, hope this helps.